We talked about permaculture on land. There is also permaculture possible in the ocean and it depends on these giant kelps which grow faster than bamboo so you can visibly watch them grow by the hour and obviously they are full of synthesizers with these leaves just like uh, plants on uh, land and you can see uh, that this is going to uh, photosynthesis is going to generate uh, lots of oxygen and you can see schools of fish here and we will see soon that there are other bigger animals that love kelp forests as well and because of the oxygen and the habitat and the filtering of the water and the nutrients and the carbon there is a whole trophic web around the kelp forest and they also make for beautiful diving spots as you can see off of uh, La Jolla uh, shore and so on and so forth. Uh, Charles Darwin uh, observed this. The number of living creatures of all orders whose existence intimately depends on kelp is wonderful. A great volume may be written, uh, might be written describing the inhabitants of one of these beds of seaweed. Uh, I can only compare these great aquatic forests with terrestrial ones in the intertropical regions. Yet, if in any country a forest was destroyed, I do not believe nearly so many species of animals would perish as would here from the destruction of the kelp. This was from the voyages of the adventure and beagle. This is a nice photo of uh, a seal that's uh, running around in the kelp forests. Uh, the number of creatures in a kelp ecosystem is extraordinary. Corallines, a branching coral-like seaweed, may encrust every frond and leaf. Cuttlefish dart in and out. Multicolored ascindia, tiny invertebrate filter feeders dot and cling to the waving leaves. So these leaves get pretty long, and uh, as they wave in the water with the uh, way uh, the, with the waves, uh, they are pretty close to the surface. So you can see them bobbing and waving. Um, on that surface, on the flat surfaces, you find sea snails, limpets, mollusks, and bivalves. Permeating this undulating landscape, attached or unattached, you may find krill, shrimp, barnacles, woodlice, cuttlefish, and crabs. Sea urchins will be gnawing away at the stems, and wolf eels, starfish, and triggerfish will feed on them. Among them all will be tiny forage fish, the smelt, half beaks, and silver sides. And circling the uh, waters around the dense kelp growth, shimmering game fish uh, will feed on these. Fish. So forage fish are the small ones that are eaten by other animals. Um, here is from this uh, report, uh, a ch book chapter, some nice images of uh, kelp forests of various types. And you can see that they're essentially like forests on land, except as we talked before under blue, car uh, blue carbon and blue economy, which is becoming big now. Uh, they can sequester a lot more carbon than uh, land for terrestrial forests and they are not subject to uh, forest fires like the land forests are which can release all the carbon in a hurry right so this is a global map of the various types of kelp forests and you can see that they go all the way from the tropical bands to mid latitudes and into the uh, high latitudes even including around uh, greenland into the arctic circle so i won't read all these names but m many of you may have heard of uh, macrocystis uh, neriocystis uh, eclonia urel uh, Eularia and so on and so forth. So um, the effects of increased temperature, acidification and increased storm intensity on different parts of the life cycle of kelps is shown here. Orange is negative effect, blue is positive effect, yellow is neutral effect and gray is unknown with the question mark. Tropics and Arctic present uh, represent effects of increased temperatures along the warmer edges of the kelp range and the cooler margins in polar regions respectively. So uh, in all these regions uh, the uh, increasing temperatures in the tropics and arctic, increasing acidification and storms, um, these are the negative effects and these are positive effects. So effects of climate driven stressors on life stages of kelps include reprodu reproduction and fertilization, 
recruitment, growth, and adult survival. So recruitment is basically how many of the ones that are uh, born survive to adulthood. So adult survival is uh, here. So you can see that in the tropics almost all stages of life cycle of kelp are having uh, facing a negative impact um, and the uh, of temperature warming uh, and Arctic uh, it's uh, neutral here, uh, positive effects, so some uh, positive effects of warming or you can expect on photosynthesizing plants. Um, increase of CO2 acidification, uh, it's unknown, uh, storm effects are also unknown on these stages, but there is proof or evidence that the adult survival to adult adulthood is negatively affected uh, here. Okay. Um, Obviously complicated, uh, but obvi more data is needed as well, monitoring and so on. Uh, but nonetheless, the idea of kelp forests or marine permaculture is uh, heavily being advocated by von Erzen, von Herzen, who is actually a physics and uh, some kind of a PhD in physics I think and worked in the electronics and IT industry for a long time and while flying Cessna uh, for fun and then for uh, helping scientists detect ponds on uh, Greenland glaciers he got convinced that number of uh, ponds were increasing uh, by hundreds each year and so he decided to get into trying to save the planet so through the climate foundation this figure shows this beautiful image of a tremendously tall uh, kelp here and you can see uh, the various ideas proposed where a kelp forest is grown by having a network of diffuser pipes and heat exchangers where cold nutrient rich waters are cycled from below to keep them uh, uh, functioning well. So this can be done uh, near the coast or in the middle somewhere and one has to take care that they are not affecting even the biggest of the cruise ships that are cruising uh, around in the open ocean. So there is a heat exchanger, there is surface buoy which actually drives this uh, it, this bobs up and down in the uh, waves and actually that produces the power and that power with the steel cable is used uh, to drive a pump which can pump cold nutrient rich waters to feed uh, the kelp forest or the permaculture in this case. Um, this is a great idea especially if it works on large enough scale uh, and it can develop its own uh, ecosystem and fisheries and so on. So this will definitely reduce the um, acidification because photosynthesis is going to take up uh, the carbon dioxide in the water that's uh, coming from anthropogenic activities and the dead leaves basically sink out mostly to the mid and deeper depths and that amounts to carbon sequestration as well which would be additional carbon sequestration so almost looks like a no-brainer good solution okay so von Herzen sees ocean permaculture as key to food security his floating arrays would not be able to host seaweed and shellfish would not only be able to sorry would not only be able to host seaweed and shellfish but also provide a resilient fast growing source of food and shelter for forage fish and game fish okay so this is an amazing uh, coming attraction and hopefully we'll see large scale implementations of these uh, marine permaculture areas around the world